for most people, Christmas dinner is the most important meal of the year. I don't see that it has to be tremendously difficult, though. You know, people do work themselves up into a bit of a, a lather about what is basically a, a fantastic roast meal. What we're trying to promote this year is the idea of having a whole bird. Now, I know for some people that have smaller households, it's perhaps not convenient. But for me, it forms a centrepiece of a traditional kind of British Christmas, if you like. It has a wow factor. And I think the bird cooks better whole on the bone than any other way. I like to three-quarter cook my turkey um, totally enclosed in a, in a tinfoil parcel, if you like, um, with some nice fresh herbs, um, thyme. I like onion in there as well, salt, pepper, a good knob of butter, and a good glass of white wine as well. To be honest, the turkeys are that good that you don't need that much more additional flavour into them. Just the white wine, obviously, is you know, a bit of acid, helps the, the flavour impart through the, the turkey, as does the herbs and the onion and the salt and pepper. But you want everything you can just to bring out the natural flavour of the turkey. There are bronze free-range turkeys available now in supermarkets. However, they are not quite the same thing at all. The ones from Golden Promise, they go outside every day. To be free range, you only really have to open the side of the turkey shell, as it were, and, and let them have a, a look at the daylight. These are actually go outside every day. So they peck around in the cherry orchards, you know, as well as the food that they get, which is natural oats, no animal proteins. They peck around, they have the grasses and the insects, which helps to develop the great flavour. And they're five to seven months old, where some of these turkeys are only two to three months old. That does make a difference in the flavour and the texture of the bird as well. They are processed on the farm, so they're slaughtered on the farm, which is important because, you know, you, you don't want animals travelling a long way and, and getting stressed. They're dry plucked. Now, most of the bigger manufacturers wet pluck the birds, which isn't as good for the finish. They certainly don't last as long and they are hung for two weeks. Now the hanging is important because turkey is a game bird. Hanging it does intensify the flavour, which again is an important part of the process. Turkey should not be dry. If you buy the right bird and cook it correctly, it shouldn't be dry. It should be moist and full of flavour. You know, there are the telltale signs of when it's cooked, you know, um, sort of juices running clear out of the cavity. When you just prise open the the leg from the breast, the, the juice is running clear there and not being trace of blood. But you can use a temperature probe as well. I would probe the thick part of the breast um, and I'll take it out of the oven when it's about between 65 and 68 degrees because it will carry on cooking as you take it out whilst you're leaving it to rest for a good 20 minutes or so before you carve. I started off quite high, um, about 190 degrees centigrade in a fan oven, and we'll cook it that temperature almost all the way through, just turning it down a little bit at the end if, if it's starting to colour too much. But 190 degrees, we'll give it you know, a, nice, a nice 10 pound turkey. We'll cook in a good two and a half hours probably um, in a conventional oven. Once it's out, just leave it uncovered. It, just, it will stay hot just on the side. It will stay hot for a good 30 minutes or more. You want to leave it to, to relax. Um, like all meats, the worst thing in the world you can do is take it out of the oven and carve it straight away. As you're roasting any piece of meat, it is a muscle. It does contract um, and it does lose a certain amount of moisture within to the, the, the meat itself. By standing it and relaxing it, the muscle reabsorbs that moisture. And so when you then carve it, you get a nice moist piece of meat. By allowing it to rest, the fibres and the, the muscle reabsorbs all the moisture that it loses during cooking and therefore is nice and succulent when you come to carve and to eat. The drumsticks will get a little bit overcooked at that end, but realistically the drumsticks aren't a good thing to eat hot. They're best to take off, take out of the way, eat the meat of the breast and the thighs and save the drumsticks to take the meat off when they're cold. Much better way of eating them. They have very sinewy strips through the, the bottom part of the leg which aren't pleasant to to cook and aren't easy to carve around. With the legs, I always take the legs off first and split the leg at the drumstick and thigh and then slice or carve out the pieces from the thigh. Again, just working against one bone, it's much easier to, to cut that off and uh, to portion easily. It's much easier, I find, to take the breast off and then carve from the thicker end through to the, the thin end of the, the breast. Once you've relaxed it, the meat will, will ease on the bone anyway and you just 
run your knife, a, a small knife, around underneath the, the breast and it will come away. And then carve against the grain of the meat from top to toe, giving a nice even slice. It's much easier to control, it's much easier to carve. Well, all we've made for the, for the turkey gravy is this very simple um, stock base. We've taken the, the neck from the giblets um, and browned that in a pan with some onion and some carrots and some fresh thyme. Allowed that to brown gently to get all the um, caramelization out of the onions and the natural sugars to come out. We then added a splash of white wine and some water to that and just let that gently simmer. As we've taken the turkey out of the oven, just removed it from its foil pouch and then added the extra juices from the turkey cooking into the saucepan with the rest of the giblets. Allowed that to simmer. Most of it's cooked already, so it won't take much longer. And then we'll just strain that into a pan, skim off the excess fat, and just thicken it gently with a little bit of arrowroot or corn flour, or if you really want to cheat, a little bit of bistro.